About a year ago, I made a tutorial on a redstone clock and people seem to like it. Well now I've made a new design and it's a lot smaller. Just like the original, it has an hour hand that goes around twice every Minecraft day and it resets whenever a player sleeps so that it's always as accurate as possible. Let's say that you just spent an hour in the nether with the clock in unloaded chunks and you return to find that it's fallen behind. Simply sleep when you can and the clock will reset back to the correct time. Problem solved. Here are the materials you will need. You can use any solid blocks you would like. My choice of white concrete for the redstone portion is based purely on looks. However, the use of glass in a few spots is required. This tutorial will only cover the redstone. I'm leaving the exterior to you. I have included a few examples of clock towers throughout the video though, if you'd like a little inspiration. Although it's not strictly required, this clock works best if it's built into spawn chunks so that it doesn't have to be constantly resynchronized by sleeping. To start off the build, place a glowstone block where you want the center of the clock to go. And we're going to go out uh, on every side by four blocks using some temporary blocks. Like so. And I'm going to use polished andesite to build the outer rim of the clock. So placing in little panels like this. And we're going to connect these up with some smaller uh, little squares of andesite, like so. Do the same thing for the top. Alright, we can remove the temporary blocks right now. Don't need them. And we're going to go around the entire inside of the clock with smooth quartz. Just like this. And then around the glowstone block, I use chiseled quartz. Just think it looks kind of nice. And then we're going to make little two indents um, like this. Two block indents going around the clock like that. And this basically marks out where the actual hand of the clock will go through. We're going to cover up the glowstone with a trap door. And we're going to take polished blackstone walls and place them in the corners like this to mark out the different positions the hand uh, can be in. To smoothen out the edges a bit, we're gonna use some slabs at the bottom, here and here, and at the top as well. And then some stairs for the very side. And just like that, that's the start to our clock. For this next part, we're gonna go around to the back of the clock and we're gonna place some temporary blocks going back by two um, from all of the slots that we've made. Just like that. And now going back around to the front, we can place our sticky pistons in place. In all of the spots here, like that. Then going back around, we can break these temporary blocks. Some of them will be coming back, but for now we don't need them. We're gonna place two uh, target blocks here and here. And then at the very top above this piston, I'm going to use concrete for the actual redstone portion. You can use other blocks if you'd like. We'll place two of them there and then redstone dust on top of both of them. For this next portion, we're going to place blocks on the pistons to connect them up in a very specific shape. So starting at the bottom here, we're going to make this X shape like this. Then coming out on both sides, we're going to go up by two blocks. On this side, we're going to go up back over a block here here and then this block has to be glass then two blocks over two blocks on top of it like that then we're gonna go make a little diagonal line like that back over by two blocks and one more block here now we're gonna place repeaters all on three ticks right here here um, right here one right here in this space right here, right there, and then finally here and there. And we're gonna connect these up with redstone dust like so. On top of both of these blocks as well as right there, down here, into there, and then no redstone is needed right here. So it should look like this when you're all done. 
On the back side here, we're going to place some blocks leading into the repeaters. Just like this. And on all of those, except for this first one, which is going to be a one tick repeater, they're all going to be set to two ticks. So click placing it and then clicking it one time to set it to two ticks. Just like this. We're also going to place a block here with redstone dust on top of it. And we're going to use some temporary blocks to place a sticky piston facing in this direction like so. And it should look like that. For this next portion, we're going to place blocks going along the bottom like this. So three right there, coming up right, right here. Uh, we're going to jump up by two blocks right here and go out by three. We're going to go over by two blocks right here. A block here. And now we're going to make a little glass uh, zigzag. So starting at this block right above the piston here, we're going to go up by one here, up by two there, up by two there, and then up by two there. So it should look like this. Now we're going to place blocks right here, going up by one here, block here, and then we're going to connect this up with a repeater right here set to one tick. Redstone along these bottom blocks, redstone here and here, and a one tick repeater right here. Then redstone dust running all along here, these three blocks as well. And then zigzagging down just like that. We're also going to come down here, go down by a block, and place a redstone torch right there, which should power all of these blocks and also extend the piston. And finally, we're going to put a um, target block right on top of the piston like so. You are also going to want to come down here right behind the piston and place a glass block with a piece of redstone on top. Now we're just going to come down here and we're going to place a block right here with a redstone torch on it that should power that redstone dust from earlier. We're going to place a block here and go up by one with redstone on both of those going into the repeater. And then finally we're going to come back up to this part, put a block here and here, a daylight sensor here, although this might change and I'll explain that later. Get rid of that block and then redstone dust right here and that should be good this next step is a little bit longer so i'll do my best to go slow so to get started we're going to go down here and place a block right here with a redstone repeater set to four ticks facing into that block we're then going to place a block here with redstone dust on top of it come down by one block like that and place a redstone repeater with two ticks on it facing into the block with that torch from before we're then going to go back down here and build across like this. Uh, place a redstone dust on this block. Go down by one like so with a redstone comparator facing into it. Then going to put a, uh, a temporary block right here with a hopper facing into it. Then I'm going to hold shift and place another hopper facing into that hopper. So they should look uh, like this. They're pointing into each other. Then a temporary block here with two blocks right here. Can remove that one. Uh, redstone comparator with redstone dust right here. Sticky piston here facing like that. Another one right here. And then a block of redstone right there. Also going to put a block of redstone right here. Add a temporary block here with a sticky piston facing across with a block on top of it. Uh, we're then going to come up here, get rid of these blocks and face, put another sticky piston facing downward. Get rid of that block. We're then going to put an observer facing downward into that redstone block from before. Um, and then finally, we're going to come up here, place a glass block, a solid block, and then redstone dust on top of both of those. Then going to come up by two, uh, one block right here and go across by three. So it should look like that. We have redstone dust here and here and a comparator facing in that direction. And when you're all done, it should look like this so far. We're then going to add in uh, two, two stacks and 60 of any stackable item. I'm using redstone dust here, but again, it could be dirt or cobblestone or whatever. It just needs to be two stacks plus 60. Now we're going to head down here and place two blocks like so with redstone dust on top of the first one and a repeater with one tick of delay facing in that direction. We're then going to face a uh, redstone observer facing into that block, remove that block. Place a block here and then two more right here. 
with dust on top of both of those and a redstone repeater set to one tick of delay right here. Two more blocks right here and a target block right there. A redstone comparator facing this direction with redstone dust here. And then we're going to add two more blocks right here, both with redstone dust on top. A note block right below here with a sticky piston facing in this direction. We're also going to come up here and add two more blocks with redstone dust on top of this one. And a redstone repeater set to two ticks of delay, just like that. For this final section, we're going to come over here and place two blocks going upwards like this with a third block on top right there, redstone dust here and here. We're going to come down here and we're going to copy this entire hopper clock over by two blocks. So blocks here and blocks here with a comparator here and here and redstone dust here and here. We're then going to place a temporary block right there with a hopper facing into it. Then holding shift, place another hopper into that other hopper. A sticky piston here and here with a redstone block right there. We're then going to add in two stacks and 60 of any stackable item. I'm using redstone dust yet again, uh, and it should look like this. And then we're going to place an observer facing downward right there. Um, we're going to come up, place a temporary block right there, and a sticky piston right there with a block on its face. We're going to come over here, and we're going to place a redstone block on the back of that sticky piston with another sticky piston facing downward right here. And then going to come over here and place two blocks right there and a third one here with a uh, redstone repeater set to two ticks right there with a piece of redstone dust right here. Um, block of glass with an observer facing upward um, with a redstone here and a redstone comparator on top of the observer. We're then going to place a solid block underneath the observer and that basically completes the back section. We're now going to come around to the front and we're going to fill in all of these spaces from before with smooth quartz so that the whole clock face is flush. And that completes the redstone. To test that the clock is working properly, simply wait until it's nighttime and sleep in a bed. And if you've done everything correctly, the clock should reset itself to 6am. And just like that, you're all set. One part of the design that's a little bit flexible is the placement of the daylight sensor. So depending on the structure that you build this clock within, there might only be certain spots where you could actually fit the daylight sensor. The important part is the number of redstone dust between the daylight sensor and this one right here. So specifically a length of four. So one, two, three, four. So for example, if this glass purple block was the only valid position for your daylight sensor, you could do something like this and have the daylight sensor be right there and that would still work. You could also have it go like this, for example. That would also still work. It's really just that uh, length of four that you need. So anything like that, and it will work just fine. There might be situations in which getting the daylight sensor within four blocks of this redstone dust here just isn't possible. And in those cases, you can use a redstone comparator to extend the signal a little bit. So for example, in this case, the signal strength going out of the daylight sensor goes through the comparator and it's the same right here. So now we're effectively counting from right here and you still have the one, two, three, four blocks. So that would also work just fine. This probably goes without saying, but you can't have any solid blocks above the daylight sensor. So be sure to only use things like glass or just not have anything above it at all. If you'd like to check it out, I will include a world download in the description. And sadly, I do not expect this contraption to work on Bedrock Edition, only Java. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, then please consider leaving a like or subscribing, and be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions or concerns. I'll see you guys later.